Hello everyone and welcome back. In the next couple of lessons we're going to talk about Firebase Storage. We're going to be implementing file upload in our application without having to write a single line of backend code and we're going to do all of that in a secure way. So how does this work? What is Firebase Storage exactly? Firebase Storage is a complete file upload solution for serverless applications built using Firestore. So let's have a look at it here in the Firebase console. So if you remember, you had here the Firestore database, you have here the Firebase Authentication tab, and here you also have the Firebase Storage tab. So how does this work? Well, Firebase Storage is a server managed by Firebase that we don't have to take care of ourselves that allows us to upload files in a safe way. We can upload the files using the Firebase SDK on the browser or the Angular Fire client that uses the Firebase SDK underneath. Any uploaded files are going to show up here in this Firebase Storage tab. So how does the security part work. We can grant or deny file upload privileges to users depending on any rules that we specify here using Firebase storage rules. So these rules work in a very similar way to Firestore security rules. We can specify here, for example, that only authenticated users have the right to upload to Firebase storage. So this is on by default. You don't have to do anything special. These default rules are already on by default, so unauthenticated users should be denied access already in our application. Notice that unlike other parts of the Firebase ecosystem, there is no emulator for Firebase storage, so any files that you upload in your local development environment are going to show up here in your production account. You can, of course, create a separate Firebase account that you use only for development purposes, so that is the recommended approach. We also get access here in the Firebase storage rules to the content of the Firebase authentication JSON web token. So that is why we can test here for the presence of a known user. We can also check the user claims and see if it's an admin or not. We can also check the file size in order to prevent the upload of excessively large files. So as we can see, this works in a very similar way to Firestore security rules with a couple of extra features that are specific of protecting a file system. Once we finish the upload of a file here to Firebase Storage, the file is going to show up here in this folder system, which is initially empty. Once the file is uploaded, we can create a safe download link that we can use to access the resource. So this could be images or videos typically, but also any other file as well. With that safe resource URL, you can then access the resource. And if by some reason you want to deny access to the resource, you can always revoke that URL here in the console, for example, or also programmatically if needed. So this, in a nutshell, is how Firebase Storage works. Let's then go back to our application and start the implementation of our file upload functionality. We are going to implement file upload here on the create course button accessible by this button here. So here is the template of the create course button. And as we can see, we get here a course thumbnail section. So we're going to upload the file, which is going to be the thumbnail of a course. And then we are going to display that thumbnail to the user using this image tag that we see here. In order to perform the file upload, we're going to be needing a couple of things. So the first thing that we're going to need is a new Angular Fire service called Angular Fire Storage. So this is what is going to allow us to do the upload itself. It's an observable based API, as we're going to see later on in the course. The second thing that we're going to need is a file upload HTML element. So let's go ahead and let's add it here. This is going to be an HTML input of type file. This input of type file is going to allow the user to open a file dialog and select a file from the file system. So we're going to detect when the user selects a file from the file system using here the change event. When the change event gets triggered, we are going to trigger here a new function that we're going to call upload thumbnail. To this new upload thumbnail function, we're going to be passing the change event that we have received here. We can do so by passing here the special dollar event variable. 
So this is not Angular specific that we have implemented here. This is just a plain HTML input file that is detecting a native change event. Let's then see how can we implement upload thumbnail. We are going to add here the skeleton for the method here on our component. And we are going to receive here the native change event. Now this native change event is going to contain a reference to our file in our file system. We need this reference in order to be able to upload the file and send it to the Firebase storage server. So let's go ahead and let's get here a reference to the file. We can do so by accessing here event. We're going to access the target property and we're going to access the files property. So by default, a file upload input like we have used only allows the user to select one file. It's also possible to select multiple files for upload if we add here the multiple files property here on the input. But we have not added that property here, so only one file is going to be selected. We can access it here by accessing the first position of the files array. And now we have here a reference to a file on the user's file system. To make sure that we manage to grab here a reference to the file, let's go ahead and let's log the file name to the console. Let's now quickly test everything that we have implemented so far. So, so far this is just a plain HTML and JavaScript implementation. We have not used the Angular Fire storage service yet. Let's switch here to a larger window and let's access here the create course screen. From here we can see that we have the input of type file. If we now click on choose file, we are going to be presented with the file system of your local development machine. So now I have here a couple of images that I'm going to be using for testing file upload. Let's select here one image, for example this one, let's click on open and once we click on open, the change event is going to get triggered and we get printed out here to the console the name of the file as expected. So going back here to our program, we can confirm that indeed we got here a reference to the file on the file system. If you want the same images in order to test your implementation of file upload, you can find them here in your project under the images folder. And with this, we are ready to start the implementation of the file upload itself. We're going to be doing that using the storage service in our next lesson.